Well, greetings everyone. Brian here coming at you from the camper van. Just wanted to do a little topic video addressing some uh, recent questions I've been getting about the rising gas prices, rising uh, prices in the grocery store, food, overall, just kind of things are getting more and more expensive. So I thought I'd address that. Um, I live full time on the road nomadically. I've been doing it for this is my 10th year. I've had a couple different vans in the past. I'm currently in a 2010 GMC uh, short box van. It's the 10 foot box van. Retired U-Haul moving van that I acquired and converted it myself into a camper van. And uh, in the recent last year, I've acquired a little five by eight cargo trail trailer that I tow behind uh, to carry my motorcycle and some camping gear in there. So uh, I'll just address gas mileage right away. In this current setup, I'm getting about 12 miles per gallon on average. Uh, without the trailer, I was getting about 14. And uh, I am very uh, conscious of my driving habits. I actually drive quite slow and accelerate very slow. I'm a 55 miles per hour driver uh, most of the time. So I think that contributes to uh, my gas mileage. A lot of people with this exact same van get a lot less, but I'm pretty easy on the gas pedal. Uh, sometimes the uh, gas mileage will drop a little bit if I'm doing a lot of mountain driving, hill climbing, and if it's really, really windy out. So, but overall, I'm getting about 12 miles per gallon. So we're gonna use that as kind of a base for the numbers that I'm gonna share with you. So we'll get right into the numbers and uh, talk about how it's been going so far. I'm gonna be basically talking about from January 1st, the beginning of this year, to currently, which is approaching the last week of May. Uh, so it's going to be like a five month, five month report on uh, my expenses so far. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get right into this. I'm just going to share really quickly how I kind of keep my records very simple, uh, not very professional at all. I just use envelopes for my gas receipts. I have two, one for the van, one for the motorcycle. Uh, I think I said already getting about 12 miles per gallon on the van. I get about 75 to 80 miles per gallon on the motorcycle. Uh, I just keep an envelope, put gas van 2023 on the front put January 1st, 2023 with my mileage at that time. Then come the end of the year, I'll put my ending mileage for the year so I know how many miles driven per year without having to go through all the receipts which I end up doing anyway, but I will just say real quick as a disclaimer, um, I make YouTube videos. I've been doing that for, geez, eight years now, maybe going on nine years. Been on the road for, this is my 10th year. So started YouTube about a year after living in a van. And um, I make a little bit of money from the ads that you see before and after my videos. So that income, I kind of claim my YouTube as a business and I can write off the gas mileage, which really helps offset the taxes that I get. They tax pretty heavy on the ad, the ad revenue. So uh, that is very helpful. So I didn't do that all along. I just started doing that in the last couple years and it's greatly reduced the amount that I ha owe from the YouTube income. And then with my seasonal job, same things. Um, if I'm at a location, uh, wherever I'm at before I start moving towards uh, that seasonal job, I can track that mileage as well and that offsets um, for the taxes that I get taxed on that seasonal job. So anyway, inside the envelope are all the receipts so far for the last five months. Mileage on each receipt so I can calculate my uh, miles per gallon and just know where I'm at with my mileage. Do the same for the motorcycle. So I'll get right into the numbers. I have so far for the first five months of this year, I'm going ahead and seeing even though this month isn't over, I just filled up. That tank will last me to the end of the month. So we're just going to say five months. So on the van, I have driven 2,352 miles. That has cost me $794.94 in gas. On the motorcycle, I have driven 2,125 miles. That has cost me $79.69 in gas on just the motorcycle. So uh, for that first five months of this year so far, on average, I've spent $158.98 per month on gas for the van and $15.93 per month on the motorcycle. So that, that high efficiency on the motorcycle, I mean, it's amazing. Almost driven the same amount of miles 
and almost $800 compared to almost $80 in gas. So very, very efficient on the motorcycle. That was the idea with me getting that. Allows me to get to a base camp with the van, use the motorcycle for exploring around the area that I'm visiting, run into town if I need to, to keep my grocery stock up. It's become, it's just become an integral part of how I live this lifestyle. So I'll go ahead and break it down. That $158.98 per month for this first five months on the van gas cost, um, that's an average. So I'll break it down per month to kind of illustrate how, how I live my lifestyle. The winter months, I really slow my roll. That is the time of the year where a lot of the states that I really would enjoy visiting are having extreme winter weather, and that's something that I don't want to be in. So I head to the southwest, Arizona, New Mexico, uh, area and it's just a lot warmer and I can hang out there. There's a lot of public land I can camp for free and not move around much. So that's how I really save my money. So for the month of January 2023, I spent $68.65 in gas. That's like as a nomad living on the road, like people think you spend all this money in gas, but I mean that's that's hardly anything. Uh, when I was renting an apartment and commuting to work every day, my I mean, it was just insane how much I was spending in gas and the miles I was driving. So for February, $49.72. For March, $67.86. For April, $97.25. Did a little bit more driving come April. And in May, $511.46. And that was because uh, we did a big drive. Uh, Kelly's mom passed, we got the news, and we just immediately started driving uh, to where her mom is up in Washington and just needed to be there for her dog and for Kelly to start addressing taking care of everything that goes with losing a family member. So um, just want to real quick just address, um, I did a quick community post on that and on Instagram and just got a huge outpouring from you guys. Just loving positive support is very much appreciated. Kelly is going through it and um, just appreciating the love and support from you all. So we're, we're, we're getting through it. Um, so anyway, uh, that's abnormal for me. Normally I do not drive that much in a two-day period, let alone a whole month. So um, that was 1,191 miles, and that cost me $511.46. So uh, still, on average, though, with that big jump, that still kept me right around $160 per month in gas for the year so far. So um, that's how I do it. I just try to live within my means. I keep my, you know, I know how much I have for a budget. I typically budget $300 a month for gas, and that's high-end, maximum. Um, I really try to keep it below that. So, so far this year, I'm doing awesome. I, I'm almost half of that. So, um, and then with the motorcycle, I think I already said it, uh, 2,125 miles, $79.69, $15.93 a month on the motorcycle. So not much at all. Um, I'll touch on kind of the camp locations, how uh, we managed to do that. Spent most of our winter, no, actually all of our winter in Arizona. We started out in Lake Havasu City. There's public land just out of town there. Uh, stayed there for a couple weeks. Then we moved into Quartzsite, Arizona. Kelly, we had uh, work at the Big Ten event there that I helped her out with. So we stayed in Quartzsite for almost a full month, moved a couple camps. And um, that's really helped keep our costs low. Then from there, we moved to Apache Junction, Arizona. We spent a good couple weeks there around the Superstition Mountains. Beautiful, loved our stay there. Then it started getting hot, so we moved up to high elevation above uh, 6,000 feet, almost 7,000 feet in the Williams, Arizona area. Stayed there for a couple weeks, loved it. And then uh, we knew we were going to be making a slow roll up to Washington State for the summer. We did have plans on visiting uh, Kelly's mom for the summer, and unfortunately she, she passed before we could get, get up there. So um, that was the plan anyway. We just planned on taking a good month and a half to, to make that drive. So from Williams, we went to Kingman, Arizona um, and stayed there. We were gonna stay for two weeks. We were there for a week before we got the call and then made the jump there. So um, that's the locations we used. Arizona is a great winter state for the reason being that there's so much public land. There's so much of it that you can 
camp for an extended amount of time and not have to drive much. Okay, so I thought I'd just go ahead and include some other monthly expenses just for your information. Uh, I do spend money on water. I try to find free water uh, when possible for like showering. Basically keep a two gallon bottle that I use for uh, doing dishes, cleaning up, and then I have another two gallon spray bottle that I use for showering. So four gallons of kind of utility water. And then I also have 15 gallons, three five gallon water bottles for my filtered drinking water. So I typically will use these water vending machines. You see them in front of grocery stores, gas stations sometimes. It's a reverse osmosis machine and it's usually about 25 cents per gallon. So I've tallied up uh, the amount of water that I use per month and it usually ends up being about $30 uh, worth of water. Um, gallon wise in a two week, I kind of go by two week periods. I'll usually use a full 10 gallons um, for drinking water and then I'll definitely use up the four gallons for the utility water showering and washing up in that. Um, I have the three five gallons but I rarely in a two week period use all three of those. It's usually just the two ten gallons or so. So that's what I do for water. Cell phone internet, I spend about $150 between my phone and internet plan. Again with the internet plan um, that I think is about $75 or so and I can write that off for the business. I pretty much just use it for uploading videos. Propane, I have a propane stove and that is pretty efficient. Um, I usually I have a one gallon refillable tank. Propane is usually you know, $3 or so per gallon, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending on the state. Lately, it's been about $3.50 per gallon. Uh, that one gallon tank will get me by two to three months usually. Uh, usually, it just depends on what I'm cooking and how much I'm using it, but two to three months I think is safe to say. So it ends up being, um, like for this first five months, I think I've only filled it up a few times, so about $10 worth of propane comes out to about $2 a month in propane. So pretty nominal for that. My diesel heater, I do have a diesel heater in the van that um, I use just in the winter time. I'm done using it for the year. So this year, I think I spent about $30 in diesel fuel ends up being about five dollars per month in the winter months when i need it so not too bad there so i'm gonna go ahead and move into the food food is my other big expense outside of gas it's actually i spend more money on food than i do gas again very common misconception with this nomadic lifestyle people think you're driving all of these miles and spending all of this money on gas uh, I've stated this in another video on a similar topic. Uh, I drive less miles than I ever have now that I live on the road. Uh, working a normal nine to five job, commuting. Uh, I ran my own business doing landscape maintenance for almost 10 years. Uh, basically just driving in circles around town every day. Um, doing people's yards. Uh, I drove way more miles per year than I do as a nomad on the road. Uh, so that's that. Um, so food, yeah, is definitely my big expense. I set a budget of about $300 per month. And I will say with the rising cost at the grocery store, it's tough to stay within that $300. Um, I've been going over, uh, I think I've been about closer to $350 per month, if not $400 sometimes. It all depends. Each month is different. Um, there's months where I run out of a lot of things that last me a long time, condiments and stuff, staples, rice, dried beans and stuff that I stock up on and get by for quite a few months. Um, so those months when I'm still have that stockpile, I'm just kind of stocking up on the fresh fruits and vegetables, meats. I do have a 12 volt fridge freezer in the camper van. The freezer comes in very handy. Um, I'm able to freeze uh, meats and vegetables to, to store and use over time. So I kind of do a stock up and that gets me by for a couple weeks. So I've been again, struggling to keep within that $300 budget, almost impossible. Um, I've had to adjust my diet. I've had to adjust a lot of the normal things that I enjoy uh, eating and buying. I just can't afford them anymore. Eggs skyrocketed there for a while. I just stopped eating eggs. Uh, so definitely been a hit. Um, Kelly is a very coupon uh, money saving sale savvy person. I've learned a lot from her using these store apps. Um, you know, some people don't like using them. They're, they're worried about their information being shared in that, but I try to tap into those. I use a lot, download a lot of these stores apps where they have special digital coupons, research those and try to save money uh, that way in groceries. I'm very sale oriented. I price compare, price check items that I get. I'll go with a brand. I'm 
not used to getting because it's cheaper just to save money and I've been doing a lot of that recently. So honestly, with the rising gas prices, I feel that it's just um, made me kind of be more conscious and drive as little as possible. Still being able to see the things I want to see and do a lot of exploring, but I just, again, keep it within my means. So uh, I would say that the biggest challenge lately has been dealing with the rising food costs. Hopefully there's a drop in prices here soon, but I honestly really don't believe that's going to happen. Uh, I think things are just going to get increasingly more expensive. So again, to touch on the kind of lifestyle I live, if those of you that aren't familiar um, with uh, my documentation over the years on my videos, uh, I usually do a seasonal job or two per year. That involves uh, usually a summer job and a fall job and um, there's usually a drive involved in that. I'm kind of based in an area, and when it comes close to the time for the seasonal job, I'll make a drive. Uh, I've been doing up to the Northwest to park my van, fly to Alaska, work the salmon industry on a boat, and then fly back to my van. I put my van in storage, and um, that's how I kind of make my money to be able to survive and pay for all this gas and food. Uh, and then also in the fall, I've been doing the farm work up in uh, North Dakota with the sugar beets, although I haven't done that the last few years. And a lot of that has been the cost of driving there. It's a long jump just for that job. I've kind of exhausted exploring those surrounding areas there, and there's just not much of a draw. The money isn't that good. So um, when I found this uh, salmon industry job in Alaska, that was able to, I was able to just work that job and with the revenue, um, the royalties from the YouTube videos kind of gets me by for the year and I'm able to still save money as well. Have a savings account, a IRA, um, independent retirement account. People always ask about that, think I'm just floating along. Um, healthcare, I usually don't touch on because it just varies so much from person to person, from state to state, where your state of residency is. So I'm just not a professional on that. I don't have a lot to share as far as that. Um, you just got to do your own research based on your age and health conditions and that. And it really shouldn't change much if you already have healthcare and you're just deciding to hit the road. I would just maintain what you have and go with that. Um, that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up. I feel like this has gone longer than I intended, so I hope the information uh, was useful for some of you out there. And I'm going to take the next couple minutes to share some personal stuff on what's going on and how I'm going to handle this summer coming up in my travel plans. So uh, if you guys want to stick around for that, I'm going to get into it. All right, well, it's time to give you guys a little update on the summer plans and what's going on and uh, how this summer is going to pan out for me and Kelly. Um, this is Hobbs. This is Kelly's mom's dog. Uh, that was one of the reasons we had to get up here so fast. When Kelly's mom passed, um, Hobbs went to animal control and we wanted to get him out of there as soon as possible. Um, he's older. He's about 12 years old and kind of has, um, he's had some issues his whole life, uh, high anxiety and um, we just knew that he'd be freaking out in that animal control being held there. So we got up here as soon as possible, got him out. Kelly is just, you know, any of you guys have been through it, she's kind of on the on her own as far as family dealing with um, what her mom left behind and all that. So she's going through it. I'm just trying to be here as emotional support. Just shower her love, shower this dude with love. Uh, he definitely went through it. Um, we noticed a huge difference in his behavior. First week and a half or so, he was pretty, I think, in shock and just down. Um, behaviorally, but he seems to be snapping back. We've really just been giving him all the love that he needs. Huh, Hobbs? He's a Kerry Blue Terrier, interesting breed. Um, Kelly's mom has had quite a few. Kelly actually had one for 15 years. Um, so yeah, I'm just loving on the dude. He's a good guy. Uh, I am going to be doing some work here. Um, I have a friend in Washington that has a boat detailing business and he's going to put me to work uh, because I'm not going to be doing Alaska, largely because I had a family event going on. I'm actually uh, the first week of July going to fly back east to the state of Maine where my dad's from. We're having a little family reunion slash services for uh, my uncle that passed recently. So uh, we're going to be doing that and then of course Kelly is going to be pretty grounded dealing with everything here and I'm going to try to pop in and out and be here as much as I can for her but I need to make money as well so um, I'm going to be bouncing around the harbors uh, in Washington. Uh, scrubbing boats, washing boats, helping my friend out. I'm gonna to continue to do what I do here and just document my lifestyle and how, how I do things. So I'll be showing you in some upcoming videos how I handle 
um, working a job while living in a van. It is possible, a lot of people do it. This is not the typical work camper seasonal job that I do that, it, that provides a campground and accommodations, but I'm gonna work it the best I can. And my camper van is pretty stealth, I guess you'd call it. It's not very uh, descript as far as it looking like a camper from the outside. It looks more like a delivery. People all comment often that it looks like a freezer van from the back. Uh, refrigerated van or something, meat truck. So I'm going to be trying parking around town to uh, keep gas mileage down, be close to where I'm going to be working. And uh, sometimes uh, the guy that I'll be working for will be able to carpool with him so I can leave the van park to save on gas. Um, there is some equipment involved with the job, cleaning supplies and that, that I can't carry on the motorcycle. So I'm going to need to use the van. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just uh, staying positive and it, uh, largely a lot of your guys' positive loving support has really helped. There's just been an outpouring of messages and comments and emails of you just wishing the best and keeping uh, us in your prayers, Kelly especially. And again, just so grateful to have this community of people that we built up over, gosh, I think we're coming up on nine years of YouTube. This is my 10th year uh, living in a vehicle on the road. So uh, super grateful for you guys. I, I think of a lot of you like extended family and uh, I'm not just saying that, I really mean that. I mean, when I see your guys' comments, you may not know it, but I've gotten to know your names, your user handles on YouTube and uh, just appreciate you guys. It's, it's, really, it's a really neat thing. Uh, it's still weird to me, this whole online presence and online community. Um, it's strange, but it's special, it's real. Um, there's, you guys are real people out there. I've got to meet a lot of you in person. And I'm just uh, super grateful for you all. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I um, hope a lot of you stuck around for this personal message here. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Peace. Say bye, Hobbs. <laughs>